Okay. Good day, okay. good day, people. Welcome to Conversations with SD Booker. Today we got a special, special guest, a business partner, a friend, man, a brother. We got CEO Michael Watkins of 1619 Gaming Group. Hey, welcome, welcome, brother. How you doing? Hey, it, it, man, it's an honor to be here, Book. Uh, you know, I, I followed you for now two and a half years. And, you know, it, it, to see your growth continue and to see the, the great things that you're doing, to, to be invited to be on your platform, the honor is mine. Respect. Well, thank you, brother. Thank you for those words. Uh, hey, likewise, the honor is mine to have you here. You, you're one of the guys I really look up to, admire. You may not know that, but I'm watching you. I'm like, man, this guy is doing things. So I'm really honored for you to take the time out to speak with me because I know you're a busy man. So, yeah, so thank love, you. Love. So, like I said, you are the CEO of 1619 Gaming Group. Um, I brought you on to talk about your game, your new game, your new project, uh, Big Stakes Five. But we're gonna take you back before we touch on that. We'll get back to that. So okay. let's let's take it all the way back. Who is Michael Watkins? You know. <laughs> Because I've seen your your previous interviews, uh, <laughs> I, I knew I knew this question was coming, and it it it, it, it woke me up at two thirty <laughs> this morning because oh, wow, I, I said I, I need I need uh, I need a, an, an appropriate answer, you know. But the but the reality is, uh, and, and and you know, I, I thought you were gonna phrase it as uh, if if an alien came from <laughs> from another world. You know, right. and they just met Mike Watkins. You know, who, who is Michael Watkins? You know, but no, I I am, and I say that with with purpose. Uh, and I know you understand the, the true meaning behind I am. Uh, I, I'd like to consider myself a a, a man, a, a servant of the people. And you know, I, I have long pondered, like like many people do. You know, what is in fact. Uh, my purpose. Uh, and so I think as a servant of the people, I'm a vehicle by which uh, the angels, as I call them, uh, communicate with others and, and provide to, to, to others. And so in no one specific circumstance or methodology, but in many different ways, I think that is brought forth. And so I don't think Michael Watkins is any one particular thing other than a communicator uh, to, to those that, that need it at whatever time and by whatever vehicle. There you go. I like that. I am. I am whatever I, am. I need to be. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Right. right. Exactly. Right. I, 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 am, I am not the, the highest uh, by, by any stretch. Right. I am, uh, but but I I am, you know, right. and and I I don't take that that lightly either because I, I do recognize it as a gift and and that has taken a while to to understand, but uh, as as I have had many experiences uh, book that I've looked back on, and I, I I now realize that it it was not me, you know my. Uh, my mind, it, it was someone, some the, through the source speaking through me. And yeah. so my job was simply not to get in the way and allow that to flow uh, through me. Right, right. Uh, it's it's uh, beautiful that you, you stated that. I kind of want to piggyback off of that. I, I like to say, and I said this recently at a, uh, a function I was speaking at, and I was trying to explain God. And what we play in that and how we're connected to God. So I use the example of, uh, say God is a, a huge, limitless body of water. Mm -hmm. Well, with no end, no limitations. You know, infinite, right? Right, right, right. We individually may be a wave, a droplet, yeah. <laughs> or or a, a current, any anything. You know, we yeah. all have... Yeah. We all have different impacts, right? But we all come from the source, right? Yes. Now Absolutely. you may you may be a huge wave that uh, 
that if you don't know your value can be easily conquered, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? But I do know a small cup of water can drown someone too. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> right? That is true. So yes, we, all, we, we all have impact. We all come from the source. And if we come from the source, I mean, God is within us. We are he, he is us. And we, we're powerful. Exactly. Now, we're not exactly. the source like you stated. But I come from right. the source. Right. Right. I'm from the source. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. I, I, I've spent uh, quite a bit of time, especially, I'd say probably the last 10 years uh, in earnest, searching you know, and, and what I call it is, is my journey uh, for truth. And, and that is truth and understanding, truth and love, truth and in, in knowledge. And, and that, that's what, you know, has, has been revealed to me. I, I, I started very early following the teachings of Dr. Uh, uh, Wayne Dwyer. And I would see his specials on, on PBS, you know, phenomenal presentation, phenomenal speaker, you know, rest, rest in peace, of course. But uh, when he, I heard him describe once, he, he was attempting to uh, define what is love. And he broke it down to the atom. And, and, and when, you, when you do that, and what he taught us in, in his uh, presentation that night was that the atom itself is not a connected piece of, of being. You know, the molecules that you have, your neutron, your, uh, your proton and electrons, but they're not touching. They're not physically touching. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he so what he was saying is that love is what connects those things. And so, you know, that that in between. And the so bonding nature. Yeah. Bonding. Exactly. And so, you know, that when I started that that journey, that that's kind of what led me to the point where I am today that helped me understand and realize, uh, you know, what, where, where I fit in, you know, right. in the, in right. that role, in that purpose. Wow. Wow. I never thought of that. I don't even think I heard that from Dwyer, but uh, wow, that's powerful. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. So the, like the power, the power of, in, in, the power of intention, if, if yes. you go back and, and check yes. that one out, that, that, that was from that presentation. Yes. Your, your why. Why am I mm -hmm. doing this? Yeah, exactly. Right? And from your why, you'll you'll come to the understanding: is this rooted in righteousness, love, or is rooted in ego? Like, what yes. is this rooted in? Yeah, why why yes. why am I doing this? Why do I want this? Right, 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 right. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. and and I I have I you know not necessarily karma. Uh, but to the extent that if if my what what I'm involved in is not based in truth and based in love, then I already know it's not going to succeed. Right. And so I'm I'm very keen uh, to make sure that if I have say within the methodology of whatever you know the process, that it, it is in fact based and rooted in those principles because otherwise it's not going it's not going to succeed. Right. Right. Yeah, man, I agree. I agree. Uh, once again, people, we have CEO Michael Watkins of 1619 Gaming Group with us here to talk about his new project, Big Stakes 5. We'll get to that, but I want to touch on his history. How did he get into the business? Uh, is, is he competent? Should we buy into Michael Watkins' project, basically? So so let's first, let's address the elephant in the room. Okay. Obviously, you're a black man. Yeah. And you're in the gaming industry. Uh, we don't see that often. <clears throat> you know, now there are some people uh, in the gaming in industry, uh, prominent black people, uh, but I don't think uh, there's enough of us mm -hmm, on the mm -hmm. business end. Very true. Right? right. I mean, you have uh, like, uh, was it Andrew Augustine, Gordon Bellamy, uh, those, those people, but. Um, and, and maybe there is a lot of us, but we're just not the, the average consumer or spectator is not tapped in enough to know if we have a big stake, no pun intended, <laughs> in right, right. the gaming industry. So yeah, yeah. let's take it back. How did you get into the gaming industry uh, as a consumer? How, how long have you been in it as a consumer? Because not all children are into gaming. So what 
What was it about the gaming that really took you by storm? You know, it, it was through, I, I, I think, uh, SD, I need to frame how I came into uh, gaming. Uh, and, so, and so not to make the story too long, uh, no, no. but, but to, to add a proper context of how this particular venture uh, came to part, my, came, came about. My business partner, uh, Neil Allen and I, we did the first ever uh, soccer, a Mexican professional soccer match in the Southeast. Wow. And uh, this was all the way back in 2005. And we brought uh, Club America, which is the equivalent in, in Mexican professional soccer, the Dallas Cowboys, let's say. Uh, and when we, when we did that, no one thought we would, would succeed. And so we, we uh, said, no, we, we can do that. You know, everybody said, well, first, you know, to your <laughs> very first point, you're black. And then secondly, you don't speak the language. You know, you, you don't, I, I didn't speak Spanish. But we were successful, had a huge event, and you know we like to tease, and you know although we really are serious when we say you know when you look at soccer now in Atlanta with with Atlanta United for example, you got eighty thousand in the Georgia Dome. We started that, you know, but okay. Uh, but when we when we did that, we realized there was an undercurrent, if you will, of amateur soccer players all throughout Atlanta. And it, it was huge in terms of the, the revenue that was being generated on a weekly basis. And so we figured, okay, obviously we, we can't do and compete with the World Cup, but there can be an equivalent for amateur soccer players. These guys, they play every weekend. You know, when I was in college, we would drive down uh, George, George Washington Parkway and you see the guys playing soccer every Sunday, every weekend, you know, and that, that happens in cities all across the country, right. amateur players. Right. So we said, you know what, we're going to do a million dollar soccer uh, tournament. And we set sail on that, on that venture. <clears throat> we were fortunate to have huge sponsors. Uh, you know, I mean, and we're talking Fortune 500 sponsor levels. We had television through Gold TV. We had even based on my relationship with uh, the late great Lamar Hunt, who had just built Frisco uh, Park, that you know now home of the, the Dallas Star, uh, not Dallas Stars, but the uh, the Dallas. Uh, and so we were putting this incredible event together and. United States Soccer Federation <laughs> rolled in on us and essentially, you know, let's call it what it is. It was a shakedown. Mm -hmm. And so they wanted 15%. They weren't going to help market. They weren't going to help promote. They weren't going to sell any tickets, weren't going to help get any sponsors. And we're like, why would we just give you 15%? Right. So we put it on the shelf. We go to Vegas to celebrate uh, Neil's 50th uh, birthday, just surprise celebration. One of the guys that works with us brings a, a young lady to, to the event. And, you know, you, we were, in fact, we're at the Bellagio and having drinks, just socializing. And, you know, you kind of common courtesy, hey, what do you do? You know, you knew, introduce right. yourself kind of thing. She says, I'm a professional domino player. So we're like, oh, everybody laugh, ha, ha, ha. Right. You know, professional domino player. We all say that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, right. really, how much how much money did you make, you know, Miss Professional Domino Player? She said, Well, I made about 75 to 90,000. Oh, really? Okay. And how how did you do this? And so she proceeded to explain it to us. We like, ah, oh, hmm. We can take the soccer model, apply it to dominoes and do a million dollar domino tournament. Okay, well, then we, uh, we the, but the first question was, is there a governing body? Because we did not want another group to roll in on us after we put all this effort, all this work into it, got all these different things lined up. I mean, it, 
and and SD, when I say lined up, I mean even we even met with then mayor, uh, uh, the billionaire that just ran for president um, oh, wow. out of New York. Uh, um, yeah, I know you're talking about too. His, yeah, uh, his name slips my mind, but the the billionaire uh, right. that was then mayor of New York. Right. And you know, we went with his team. We, you know, we were traveling all literally across the country. But anyway, uh, fast forward, we said, okay, we can do that, do the same thing, do the model. But then uh, the, the whole idea was, okay, in the traditional domino game, you play uh, with using pen and paper. And, you know, look, hey, you might be my guy, but can I trust that you're gonna write down my score correctly? Right. And so we needed a, a, a mechanism, if you will, to keep the integrity of the game. For yeah, we call that, like, yeah, we call that yeah. pencil, uh, pencil whipping. Pencil whipping. There you go. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and, and so, you know, that was that was the impetus uh, of how the game game was created. And that was that was my introduction to to gaming in, in the true sense, because prior to that, I tried uh, my wife, you know, she, she's fortunate. She, she works for GameStop. And wow. so, uh, you know, she, she gets to bring home different games at different times. Um, at one point when I was working for my grandfather's foundation, we, we had Sony as one of the sponsors. So wow. Sony gave Playstations to the, the guys that were participating in the game, they gave them games. And of course I got one, you know, as CEO of, of the foundation. Right. Well, I played SD, I played one night, Grand Theft Auto, it had just come out. Next thing I knew from the time that I started playing, it was three and a half hours later. Oh, it's I, easy. Easy. <laughs> easy. I said, I, I can't do this. If, if, if there is such a thing that's going to get me engrossed <laughs> and take right. my time, and I have no idea how long I've been playing, I have no concept of time, right. I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. And so, but that, you know, but my point is, that was my introduction to, and so I thought, hmm, I won't ever be a gamer. Even when we created the game, I was not a domino player. I didn't play dominoes growing up, and I'm not a, a poker player either. either. So, oh. Yeah, uh, but you know we, we'll talk about it. But that 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 helped me in the end. Right, right. So w w I was curious about this. Where did the name sixteen nineteen gaming group come from? What what is that? What's the story behind that? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. You know, you you alluded to the fact that there are so few uh, African Americans in in gaming, uh, and while you have a, a very select few uh, at the top. It, it, and you do have quite a number of programmers and coders uh, that are, you know, working for these different companies, gaming companies and whatnot, but very few are at the, at the head uh, in the C-suite. Right. So uh, 1619 is an opportunity for us to pay homage to our ancestors that, uh, you know, while they made the trek across unknown seas, we're now creating that bridge uh, in the digital divide and, and now sailing the, the digital seas. So it's an opportunity for us to pay homage to those that came before us. Uh, 1619 obviously is a, a very point, a uh, very important point in the demarcation of, you know, when our people uh, were no longer free, if you will. And so it's, it's really out of respect and, and honor for those that came before us that, that paved the way. They, they imprinted us with the ability to survive and do anything you know, that we wanna do. Uh, and so for us, there's no greater way to pay uh, respect and homage to, to those that came before us. Wow, I agree. I agree, powerful, profound name. Um, you alluded to, you were, and we, I, we won't, uh, uh, you know, touch on this too long, but you alluded to you were governing or running your fa your grandfather's foundation. I uh, just want to let the people know your grandfather is is the late and the great, respected, honorable Coach Eddie. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Coach Eddie Robertson, so of Grambling University. Uh, so 
piggybacking off of that or, or, or extending, expounding on that, it's obvious hearing your story that you weren't necessarily a gamer uh, per se, you know, in the, in, the, um, in the typical sense, but it's obvious that you had that entrepreneur spirit. So where did you get that from? Were, were, you, were you groomed to be that way or is it just in your DNA? Yeah, you know, I, I think in a lot of ways, uh, while not purposefully, I was groomed to be that way. And, and, and here's, here's why. See, I grew up in my grandfather's household, uh, my sister and I. And so from the time that I was in the fifth grade uh, up until I graduated college, you know, I literally lived in his household. And so while he was world renowned, if you will, as a head football coach at Grant State, and you know, ultimately becoming the winningest coach in Division One college football and all these great things. What people really don't know is that uh, my grandfather was an entrepreneur. So well, anytime, yeah, he we we owned uh, apartment complexes, and you know, so that was you know uh, one of his ventures. But as you know now have, have come to know the town city of Gramlin there's there's quite a bit of opportunity in front in terms of in, you know if you're an entrepreneur to right. to bring businesses into the community and so while even though we had the the apartments my grandfather was always trying to do more but my grandmother wouldn't let him <laughs> so <laughs> So he wanted to, you know, when they, at one point they had a Sonic and, you know, but he wanted to do that way before. He wanted to do a McDonald's. He, wow. he wanted to do a hotel uh, and, then, and then even a, a grocery store, but all of these different things. And I would hear him, uh, maybe lament is not fair, uh, but, but he was eager above and beyond, he, you know, he's got, daily schedule for coaching and, and recruiting and all these different things, yet he had a drive to do more. Mm. And so I think that that's where it started in terms of understanding that you can always do more. Uh, and then from, from there, uh, you know, I, I like to tell people, SD, I don't think I've ever had a real job. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, I, I graduated got my commission as a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force. But when I had left the Air Force, I went to work for my family and then I went to work for myself and I've been working for myself ever since. And so to that end, you know, that, that's where that entrepreneurial drive comes from. It, it's really for me and you know, it, it doesn't work for, for everyone, but I, I just don't, necessarily believe in making somebody else's dreams you know come true i want to make my dreams come true and then through my efforts then if i can help someone along the way okay that's great but i i i gotta i gotta be you know running running the show not 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 because I, i've been you know top dog i've been number two maybe even number three at, at, at different points in in the company but i've always been c-suite so, right. um, and, and that, that is just, you know, part of, of who I am as a leader. Um, but, you know, I, I think it, that that's critical, you know, as well. Oh, no doubt. So, and we'll get into Big Sticks 5 uh, Gaming, your new project. And once again, people, I got CEO Michael Watkins, CEO of 1619 Gaming Group. We're going to talk about his big project that's coming out tomorrow, actually. New Year's Day, uh, yeah, Big Stakes yeah. 5. It's a twist to it. It's dominoes mixed with poker, chips. It's a twist to it. We'll get into that. Just kind of want to dive into his history a little bit. So what are some of the obstacles you faced as an entrepreneur that, that other budding entrepreneurs uh, can take from, from your lessons or, or your trials and tribulations? Yeah, that, that, that's a great question, uh, SD. The... The biggest obstacle I think that m most any entrepreneur will face, you know, easily the inclination is to say capital. It's not capital. The universe will provide you whatever you need. 
It's the belief, the thought that I can and I will. And I, I often have this conversation with our team members, not my business partner. Uh, Neil is, is, is about as driven as anyone else you know, can be. But we explain to people, sometimes you just have to will things uh, into, into reality. And if you don't know how to do that, uh, or, or if you don't have the fortitude to do that, then you are in the wrong line of work as an entrepreneur. It, it takes a special kind of person. And you know, I even say entrepreneurship is not for the faint of heart because uh, you know, you're gonna face times where you doubt yourself, you doubt what you're doing, uh, is it worth it? Is, you know, am I wasting my time? Am I, not that I, am, am I gonna fall on my face, but, but you understand that there, there, there are responsibilities, if you will, to, to others in, you know, whether it's your family, your, your wife, your children, and then people are looking to you as a, you know, a source, as a leader uh, of the household, right. if you will. And so I think first and foremost, the biggest obstacle is getting out of your own way. You know, I read, I read a book by, by Tyrese uh, Gibson, great book, and which is, you know, titled the, the very same, learn how to get out of your own way. And so, and, and until you do that, then you don't have the, the ability to, to understand what it really takes to, to be an entrepreneur. Once you overcome that hurdle, uh, it's, you know, however, that's at the point where, yes, you will need capital, you will need resources, you will need a team that can help you get to where you want to, want to uh, ultimately grow and, 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 you know, flourish. But first and foremost, to, to answer your question, is getting out of your own way. Wow, wow, I totally agree. And I want to I wanna tell a short story uh, related to that and related to you, I think it was about two weeks, two or three weeks ago. Man, I woke up early. I'm laying in bed. I'm just uh, pondering over things, man. Uh, just thinking about, man, the, the, the mountain I got to climb as a writer, as a, a budding producer and, uh, you know, just things like that. I got my own ventures going on. Right. And uh, I'm in bed just thinking over this stuff. Like, man, man, how do I get out of corporate America? Like, then I got I got a family, like, hey man, like I'm just I'm getting bogged down with it, right? Just just laying there thinking about all this. So man, I get a call on my phone, <laughs> I look at it, Michael Watkins. <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, I'm like, this brother don't really ever call me. We text all the time. <clears throat> right. I say, right. so, so so something's going on. You know, let me let me answer it. Like, <clears throat> so. Man, you just started going in about um, basically stay stay the course, hey, yeah. stay focused, and uh, just keep going. He you're like, I don't know why I'm calling you with this, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> something's telling me he call call you. And I was like, wow, man, that that was perfect time, and I needed that. And, right, uh, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So that goes back to. <clears throat> You're you're saying something you told you told me recently, <laughs> and I you know maybe the angels the universe, you know commanded you to do that, and I was obedient to answer the call and not and not getting all in my feelings like man I don't feel like talking right now, <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? So I right, answered, right. and so yeah, yeah yeah we were both we were both obedient to that, but that goes back to what you're saying, man. Basically, people, he said, man, you gotta have perseverance, you gotta have heart, um, you know you gotta be a game dog. And uh, you got to be willing to, to, to die, to die for Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, 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 and as I told you, uh, I recall that day as well, there are many people who earn a check. But most people don't understand the difference between earning a check and making money. If you make money, you literally create something that generates money you know there's a huge difference you know you go to work for corporate america or you know you name it but if someone else is signing your check 
you earned a check. If you created yourself, then you made money. And there's a huge difference. And you know, you have you have to understand that. But but you're absolutely right. Uh, and 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 I must say, I got I the the obedience to the universe I, I did get from you. Uh, it may have been last year, in fact. But but you said it. I, I filed it away, and and never forgot. But that I, I forget the particular circumstance in which you were obedient and reached out to me. But I had the opportunity to return the favor and be obedient to the universe and and say to you those words. But again, it goes back to what I was saying in the beginning. That that is just me being the voice, the vehicle. I have no idea what. Uh, you know, I couldn't even begin to tell you what I told you that day, right. because oftentimes it's really it it's really book and this this may sound strange to some people, but it's literally like an out of body experience oh, I because it. I can't I can't repeat to you what I said. Right. You know, I was, I, I've, been, I've I've thought about this. I've I've had that experience many times, uh, even when I've, I've given speeches. Uh, you know and. People will, I, I, I've, I've had the, I don't know if it's fortune is the right word, but I've literally made grown men cry. No. Not, not in a, in a, in a pejorative, no. negative no. You know, way, but they were so inspired listening and on the edge of what I was saying. And when I finish, I feel this lifting, if you will, off of me, like, like, you know, you see, everybody's seen the movie Ghost, right? Right. And right. and and uh, Patrick Swayze's character enters Whoopi Goldberg, and, right. and then when when he leaves, exits her body, then she's weak. You know, but she feels this. Oh, okay, now I got myself back. Right. But uh, you know, people are like, man, where did that come from? Where did where did you pull that from? Because I often, most times, nine times out of ten, I don't write the speech. I'll make a few notes and then go right. and it allow the, the universe to speak through me. And so my point being, I have no idea what I said. I have no idea what I, what I said to you that day, but obviously it resonated and it was for you. It was, it was your purpose. Yeah, I needed that. That was, that was perfect timing. And I think you don't remember what, what you're saying because it's not ego based, it's spiritually based. You're tapping into yeah. your higher self and you're just being obedient. And so once yeah. you're done, you completed your assignment, <laughs> zap, <laughs> you know, <Yeah>. so, exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. So let's, let's kind of touch on that because although we're here to talk about Big Stakes 5, which is coming out tomorrow, dominoes mixed with chips, poker element, nothing like it out there on the market, rolling out tomorrow. We're with CEO Michael Watkins of 1619 Gaming Group. Now you mentioned, uh, well, this stage, I I'll say this stage is just not about product. It's about spirituality and feeding the people some real content, you know, some real mm -hmm. content that's going to help them. You mentioned something very important that a lot of people are confused about, uh, not the way you, you versed it, but how to tap into that. And that is earning money versus making money. Is there a mm -hmm. science to that? Or is it just simply about being creative? Yeah, again, great question. I, I, I can't say necessarily that it's a science to it. Uh, I think it's really just the will. We oftentimes will come up with an idea. My wife, she, she has invented countless number of things. Right. You know, she's, oh, and, and she, she takes pride in, you know, ah, I got a new invention. And right. she'll, you know, pause the TV, okay. Let's listen to what this invention is. And then she will, will, you know, spout it out. And then my daughter and I will evaluate the concept and, and whatnot. So, but the, but the thing is, the reason I say that, that happens to all of us all the time. We'll see something, experience something. Why can't we change this? Why can't we do this or or why can't it be like such? And again, this goes back to lessons early in life that I got from my grandfather, which 
he told me that that resonated and and stuck with me as you enter Gramlin from highway 20 uh, uh, in highway, interstate 20 this when you enter the city of Gramlin from the exit to uh the the very first street right there in new rocky valley okay very dark so this was probably back in 1998, 97 ish. And my, I had a conversation with my grandfather about it. And he said, well, if you want something changed, you have to change it. Okay. See, so it sounds very simple, SD, but not many people are willing to go through the steps that it takes to make that come to fruition. Right. So I said, okay. So I wrote a letter to the mayor, wrote a letter to the city, city council and explained to them and expressed to them, you know, the significance of having a well-lit entry into the city and, and whatnot. And so now it's, it's, you know, it's no longer dark like that, you know? Now, I'm not saying that that wasn't in the works before, I wrote that letter or whatnot, but the the point is he explained that to me at you know a young age that and it and it resonated with me and so as we as individuals see different things and find opportunities to 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 change a paradigm that may seem so very simple when people are introduced to the concept of big stakes five they're like. Oh, why didn't I think of that? Well, you know what? You maybe you did at one point, but you right. didn't act on it. Right. We acted on it. Right. Right. You, you said something very important. And I was thinking of this as you were talking, and then you you said it. You said it's no longer it's no longer dark now. Right. So so to the people, you can't get light without going through darkness. You got to face the darkness. Right, yes. you got to face Absolutely. the darkness. You have to, and that's that lead work. That's that uh, those those late nights, uh, self doubt, uh, doubt from people, uh, maybe in your own household, uh, lack of support. That's the darkness. But most of the darkness comes from self. You you yes. plan, yeah, your own mind, your own, yeah, just yeah, your own self doubt. And facing that darkness, you get everything you want. You know, the light will be revealed. Uh, but like you said, you got to put in the work. You got to put in the work, yeah, yeah. and uh, that's that's the thing. Keep working. And um, yeah, so absolutely. You you yeah. have to keep working. And yeah. and and you know, I this, I don't. I, my, my wife may find this inappropriate or, what, or whatnot. But you know, I, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna share this this small story with you. And and you have to forgive me, uh, SD. I I grew up in Eddie Robinson's household. And he is known or was known as having the gift of gab. And I tell everybody, you can't grow up in Eddie Robinson's household and not. Hey, man, <laughs> hey, man you, not you, you and I are not strangers. <laughs> Come on. Okay. And not, not inherit the gift, the gift of gab. But, right. but uh, the, the story is that there was a time and, you know, my wife has been in corporate America for, you know, my wife was in corporate America, quite honestly, when we were at Howard together. So, you know, she, she is, has remained in, in corporate America, but uh, what that does to you is it, it puts you in a line and a mindset of all you have to do is go and apply and you can, you too can get a job. You know, I'm educated obviously, and I could work in corporate America and do probably phenomenal things. And so her mindset was, why don't you, you know, because at, at that time we were experiencing a, a downtime in the entrepreneurial wave. And, and so she was, you know, constant in my ear. But, but when we talk when, and when you talk about the will and the drive that it takes to be successful and to get ultimately where you want to be, and, and it, it, it may sound, it, you know, in, 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 in some, for some people, it can be dangerous uh, because, in, you know, it's like a weapon. 
in the, in the wrong hands, it, it can in fact be dangerous. But my will and my drive was so steadfast and so determined. And, and so, and because she was in my ear, I said, I'd rather be homeless than to listen to you constantly telling me about go get this job, go, go do this. Because I, at that time was not able to, to generate any, any revenue for the household. Right. But, but that, that, that takes, it takes, uh, it takes a fortitude that, yes. you know, not, not many people. And, and, and so I, I, I that's why I say that that's a cautionary tale in a lot of ways, because uh, I don't want people to think, OK, just go throw everything away and right. you'll be homeless until right. you succeed. You right. know, right. Because, you know, I, I was fortunate that she was in corporate America, so I could lean on her right. to get us through. But that doesn't work for everybody. So, I, I you know, that that story comes with caution as well. Right. Yeah, I, I totally understand what you're saying. Um, yeah, I, I totally get it. So, we'll, yeah, that's a great story. But, yeah, you have to really uh, dig deep and know what your higher self is telling you. Yes. And, and so you going that route was not based on ego. That was a fire yes. in you. Yeah, that was a fire in you. Just would not let you go the corporate route. So, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, some people don't go that route out of ego, laziness or or wh whatever it is, it's out of ego, but it's not their higher self. So that's what, so I wanna, I wanna say that any decision you make, uh, you know, make sure it's tapped into your higher self, rooted in righteousness and not out of ego. If it's rooted that's in right. ego, it, it, it ain't gonna work, man. It ain't gonna work. So uh, yeah, yeah. Um, now, I was fortunate enough to get the beta version a big stakes five uh, a, a while ago, man, maybe, maybe four months ago, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Four or five but, months yeah. ago. Yep. Now I'll be, I'll be transparent. <laughs> I play the, uh, the space game on my phone, man, maybe too much actually, man. I spent too, too much time, but it's a way of meditating for me also. So right, while I'm right. playing, I'm also thinking and strategizing. And I had to tell my wife that I said, you, you think I'm playing this game on my phone? Like, it's, it's more than that. It's a way for me to relax. And I'm, yeah. I'm thinking, I'm strategizing. So now I tried to get into certain domino games online. It just didn't do it for me. It didn't mm -hmm. do it for me. Now, I got a whole other beta version of Big Stakes 5. Man, I... I was bought in, you know, I bought in right away when I saw the, the uniqueness of it. I was like, okay, this is what, this is what the game needed. You know, this is what the game needed. It has a, a poker element, a gambling element to it. And I like the layout. I like the visuals. Yeah, uh, yeah. You, it's, it's, it's obvious. It's evident that you guys put a lot of work into it and had some really talented people uh, working on this, this project. And uh, let me see if I could do a, let me see if I could do a split screen, a share screen right here, man. Uh, okay, okay. Let me see. Let's see. There it goes. So can you still see me? I can see you, yeah. I, okay. I see your screen on, on the Zoom. Okay. So let's see. I guess I, I guess I removed it. Let me see something here. Well, I saw the Big Six Five tab on the web. Uh, on, look like on your browser. It was on your on your Zoom browser, the same one that. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Let 
Let me see. Maybe I'm over. This is my first time doing the share screen. So can you see that screen? Yeah, sure can. Okay. So yeah, guys, uh, people, this is the website. I mean, the graphics is phenomenal. Um, man, it's phenomenal. I've been checking this out. You got the... Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, you got the team here. There's my man, Michael Watkins, CEO. So you got a diverse yeah, group here. Yeah. Yeah, and and and, and I tell you what, uh, you know, we, we talked about the, the team earlier. And, for example, uh, you know, Chris Leon, for example, <laughs> he's a young, young student, 21-year-old uh, at UCLA. But, okay. you know, he's, he's been in, in the social media space since he was, you know, almost 13. But, but you know, I, I believe in uh, having best in class, you know, in terms of the team. And, you know, the, you've heard the, the same book. If, if you're the smartest person in the room, you've got the wrong team. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, you got a problem. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. So if you if you scroll back to if, hit that left button, um, Olivier is, is the C CTO then you know he, he's been in in the space now just scroll a little bit more one more time uh, yeah there you go so uh olivier has been in, in the space now uh for uh, it about 20 years a little over over 20 years uh, microsoft uh expert azure cloud uh but you know and now and now he, he's at uh he's at uh, jp morgan senior level uh, IT exec. But, you know, when you, when you hear him talk about the, all that, that goes on behind the scenes to, to make an app, you know, and again, this, this goes back to, to, to create, creation, if yes. you will, um, because we play different apps. You know, you, you play Spades, you play um, now Big Stakes 5, you, probably played other other games as well. What we see as a general public is so tip of the iceberg of what really goes on behind the scenes in terms of all of the infrastructure that made that possible. And I tell you, we would not be anywhere near uh, where we uh, are today without the likes of, of Olivier and then of course, Neil, uh, Neil and I have been together now almost 20 years, and you know he's a former NFL agent. Man, that brother knows his stuff. And when you know when you talk about you want somebody in in your foxhole with you to, to go to war, you don't get no get no better than 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 Neil Allen. So you know the, the that that's the whole idea is to put together the team. You know, we don't, what we don't show represented here is the legal team, for example, from uh, intellectual property to corporate, uh, corporate law, contest rules, you know, uh, the corporate infrastructure, the accounting, you know, Gary Johnson, the CPA and his team. And because one of the things that, that I knew, you know, we, you, you alluded to it before as a, a black led firm. We're going to be and will be constantly under scrutiny, like no other. How? Where did these people come from? Um, you know, how how did they do it? And so, so it was critical that I put together a team. And, and again, going back to Grandpa, knowing how to put it, put the team together. You know, and and the great thing about our team at sixteen nineteen is no one person. Is trying to be the other person, you know. Right. I'm not trying to be Neil. He's not trying to be me. We dare not ever try to be Olivier. And we just don't know how to be Chris, you know, on the right. social media side. But but the the point is, you put that team together that keeps you out of hot water right. and and above reproach, where you know no one can can say you know, hey, did they pay their taxes or did they file? you know, this report with the state or do they have the, the appropriate legal uh, disclaimers within the, the game, all these different things that, that it takes that people don't even begin to think about. And, you know, 
I'm fortunate again, is that communications, you know, and when I was in the Air Force, that was my, I was command and control. And command and control means you, my job was to be in charge of the air war, the entire air war. And so you learn how to see the big picture and communicate where it needs to be communicated so that the mission doesn't lack or fail in any one given area. And so, you know, I, I bring that as leader of, of this team, but still having a team that, you know, keeps my ass out of hot water. No for doubt, sure. No doubt. And that goes back to being self-aware, having self-awareness and knowing I can't do it all by myself, formulating the, 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 the right team, you know, with the, the, the right personalities. Uh, and you mentioned the scrutiny that you knew you would be under and that people that look like us are under when we do something this big, right? Or anytime we mm -hmm. reach out to the public and say, buy into me, I yes. have a product. Yes. And so this is why I didn't want to just jump into talking about Big Sticks 5, right? I wanted to right. dive into going back into your history to show the people, no, this guy is a real deal, right? Yeah. He has yeah. credibility. He, he, he's, he's to be respected. He knows what he's doing, knows what he's talking about. And he's a he's an entrepreneur by blood, right? It's just not something right. he decided to, to jump into one day. So that's yeah, yeah. you're right. That's why we're, we're diving deeper, opposed to just focusing on big stakes five, right? So yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. So we we, once, we uh, sorry, ahead. sorry. Yeah, I was gonna say we we literally started this process. I mentioned Neil's fiftieth uh, birthday party. That was you know the impetus uh, of what is now Big Stakes Five, was started out as a base domino tournament for a million dollars and it turned into Big Stakes Five. But it took five years, for example, just to get the first patent. Uh, because as you can imagine, we're taking a game, the, the foundation of a game that was invented in the 10th century and going to the U.S. Patent Office saying, we have done something new. And they're like, no, you have not. <laughs> and so it took five years again. But this goes back to your will and your determination to fight. We went tooth and nail with USPTO before they, and five years later, they finally succumbed and gave us the patent, the first patent. We ultimately got a second patent two years after that. And you know now our IP team is working on even more patents. But... My point is, you know, that that goes to, you know, the the will and, and the process. But I, I like to crack, you know, tell the joke that we're we're like the music uh, guys. I I remember Alexander O'Neill, one of my favorite singers, yes. uh, favorite <laughs> yes. artist, and and he's like, it took me twenty years to become an overnight sensation, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. And the Six Five would be the same way. It took us twelve yeah. years to be, you know, hopefully if we are fortunate to to uh, become an overnight sensation. But yeah, it will have taken 12 years to become an overnight sensation. Right, right. Now, for the people that are not so business savvy or know the jargon, IP team is intellectual property. And <laughs> yeah, so so I'll, I'll, I'll dive in at another video about intellectual property and how important it is in another video. But I know I know we can get caught up using jargon. <laughs> it's like, yeah, what? yeah, What's my IP? Apologies. Yeah, internet protocol? No, 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 no. no so I, intellectual property team. And so that's a whole different conversation. But once again, guys, we got CEO Michael Watkins here. He's the CEO of 1619 Gaming Group, coming out with his new project tomorrow that's been in the works for five years, Big Stakes 5. Now, let's dive into that, Mike. How would you explain the uniqueness or the, the, the game, the infrastructure of Big Stakes 5. What is Big Stakes 5? Big Stakes 5 is a supercharged domino game at its core. It's a supercharged domino game. It's very offensive minded in terms of the approach because unlike uh, the traditional domino game that you may play a number of games where the winner ultimately has to score 150 points total in big stakes five, each hand, each wash, if you will, is its own game. And all you're saying is on this particular hand or this particular wash, 
I'm going to score more points than anybody else. And I'll, I'll tell you how, how, how that came to be. When we first started looking at the, the domino tournament that we were going to do in Las Vegas for $1 million, the idea was, okay, how do we make this sexy for TV, right? And so we're, we're, we're playing a couple of games and I'm not scoring a lot. So I'm sitting here looking at basically 15 points. Now there's no, at, at that point, no, no, no have we, uh, well, okay, well, let me, let me, let me, let me back that up. So the, the first thought was how, how do you keep score? In the traditional game, you use pen and paper to keep score. Right. And you, as you alluded to earlier, you pencil with them. Right. So in Big Stakes 5, you use chips to keep score. And each chip is five points. Everybody has their own color. So you can't just slip some chips on your side and be like, oh, no, I scored. You know, no. <laughs> because if your chips didn't come from the appropriate person, you know, okay, you, you know, basically you chip whipping, I guess. Right, <laughs> right. Right. Big right. 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 So, so that was the, the whole emphasis. But then as I'm sitting, we played a few hands and I'm sitting there with just, I think I had 15 points worth of chips. And I'm like, hmm, how am I ever gonna catch up? You know, my wife's sitting here, she's got like 40, Neil's got 60 and, you know, maybe my daughter, I don't know who was playing with us, had, you know, maybe 35. I'm like, man, this is gonna be hard for me to catch up. So I said, yeah, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna take these, all I got is these 15, chip or you know or, or the three each, each chip is worth five points and i'll say i'm gonna put my 15 points that i'm gonna score more points than anybody else on this next hand so stacy's like okay i'll take that she puts up her three chips neil puts up his three chips my daughter puts up her three chips i score more points than anybody you know we played next hand i score more points I get everybody's three chips. Now I'm plus nine. I'm back in the game. So we're like, whoo, okay, that works, you know? And so when we took that to Vegas, they were like, do you guys know what you have here? And now we really didn't. <laughs> right, right. But we, right. Act, we acted like we did. Gotcha. <laughs> you know, hey, we poker acted face. Like we did. Poker face. Yeah, you better, be, you better <laughs> believe it. We must have something, right? So, so, so what those chips turned into is at home with friends and family, the chips are like Monopoly money. No big deal. You know, you play Monopoly, it's, you know, everybody gets their money and whatnot. Just like Monopoly money. But online and in a casino environment, the, that money is real. Dollar for dollar, for example. So, so to answer your question, that's what Big Stakes 5 is. It's a supercharged domino game that uses chips to keep score and then allows you to risk a given amount of money, uh, you know, whether it's virtual or real, on uh, each hand. And by whatever measure you need to score more points, then you... Uh, you know, that, that's how you, you, you win the game, by scoring more points than, than your opponent. Now, I, I mentioned that how do you make it sexy for TV? Because as you mentioned, you're, you're a space player, right? Mm -hmm. Well, this is where the five comes in, in terms of big stakes, five. When you play spades, you deal the cards, goes around one time, you throw out that ace of diamonds, or let's say you throw out the king, of diamonds. Oh, it goes around one time, it comes back around, you sitting on the ace of diamonds, king of diamonds, and maybe the seven. But you only got three diamonds. So you're like, okay, I'm gonna count these two books, you know, the ace and the king. Yeah. But you throw out you throw out the ace, you, it goes through, you throw out the king, somebody cuts you. You automatically know, okay, this person, this person cut, right? No intrigue in that, right? No, no. Same thing in dominoes. With, when you have traditional domino players, they have the ability to know very quickly as the game, you know, it goes around one or two times. 
Hey, book. Go ahead and play that. I, I know what's in your hand. I, I, yeah. I can tell you what's in your hand. <laughs> yeah. I know what you got. You yeah. might as well go ahead and play it. Right. So, so, so we wanted to to create and some an, uh, inherent entry in into the game. So what we said is instead of pulling seven, pull five and leave eight stones on the table. Well, now when you leave the eight stones on the table, and remember I said it's it's a it's a points driven game. Mm -hmm. So and remember also I said we were not domino players, we were not poker players. So we were not married to any rules of any particular game. Right. You know, oh, you can't do that. You know, all that, that all, mm -mm. Right. anything goes. You create it, and if it makes sense, if we can validate it, it works. So in Big Stakes 5, you can pull from the quarry, we call it. You know, it's traditionally known as the boneyard, but we call it the quarry. You can pull from the quarry even if you have a play, because really? look, you you might be looking for stuff for a for a point, right. you know, to, to be able to you need you need that six four to get to get a, a, a fifteen you know right. score right. or what what happened, you know. Right. But the point is, you as my opponent don't know if I don't have a play or if I'm looking for points, right. and so right or I might have, let's say I'm sitting on four threes. Mm -hmm. Well, chances are two of those other threes are probably in the court. If I pull them and now I'm at six, there's just one more three out there. Right. I can lock the board and I can get everybody's money. Yeah. So, but the, 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 the point is entry. That, that's yeah. all, all it is. And so yeah. when you, no, no. and if you, yeah, so so that that's what Big Stakes Five is in in a nutshell. Man, I, I love the game. I didn't know what to expect, <laughs> but but I, I love it. Uh, like I said, I only got the beta version, of course. The 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 big rollout comes tomorrow, New Year's New Year's Day, guys. Make sure you download that Big Stakes Five now. How many? I know you got two patents, so can you tell the people the platforms or the patents you have so far? Yeah, we have two patents. One, the first patent we got was for the electronic version. So that, that covers your consoles, your mobile apps, uh, and, and computer, uh, you know, web, web versions. And uh, we got that, in, and we were fortunate to get that in 2013. And then the second patent we got was for the actual tabletop uh, version, which inc includes recreational play, uh, you know, casino play, and then, and then your, your retail um, version. And so, you know, the, the benefit of that, and this, this, is, this is, you know, again, where it goes into follow up with, if you have an idea, you know, think about when, when we invented Big Stakes Five, Texas Hold'em was at its height, right? ESPN, World Series of Poker, you name it, you know, you always saw uh, Texas Hold'em. Now, Think about if you owned Texas Hold'em and every time anywhere in the world somebody played Texas Hold'em poker, whether it was on TV or not, you get paid, right? Yes, licensing, yes. Licensing, exactly. So as proprietors, as patent holders, patent owners, if you will, anytime somebody plays Big Stakes Five, we, you know, 1619 uh, will, will benefit from that. And so, you know, it, it's, it, it's something that, that you, you can't take, you know, for granted in, in right. the lease, uh, but it, it's also, you know, very important. Uh, any, anytime someone uses chips, you know, and again, using chips to keep score. I have, I have seen, I watched, for example, an episode of Real Husbands of Hollywood, Kevin Hart and, and his crew. Uh, right. Right. You know, Dwayne, and that, that, uh, yeah, yeah, the, you know, Nelly, all, all, yeah. all the fellas, you know, they're playing dominoes, and guess what? They have cash money right there on the table, right? They're not using chips, but they got the cash money. Well, you replace the cash money with the big stakes five money chips, and it's the, the equivalent, right. and it's and instead of using the pen and paper to keep score, 
Now you're using actual chips. And when we went down to Andalusia, Alabama, which is the home of the World Domino Championship, we uh, introduced the Big Stakes Five game. Everybody looked at us, you know, kind of that side eye, like, what in the world? But the one thing that got their attention was the chips. Because again, these people have been watching the poker guys on TV for years. And now all of a sudden, as a domino player, traditional, now I get to be like on the guys on TV. So they're playing with the chips and they're yeah. folding them all through the thumb, you know, through the thumb and all these different things that they've seen on TV. Yeah. And now they get to do, you know, themselves. Yeah. And so, you know, and, and, and through that, we've been fortunate now to bring on board uh, Travis Newsom. He's a three-time world domino champion. He's the commissioner of Big Stakes Five and our director of gaming. Wow. And to have someone of that caliber, again, going back to build a team, make it, you know, you, you have to, to have credibility, you know, in what, in what you're doing. Who, it's not, I learned from one of my mentors years ago, it's not what you say it is, it's what everybody else says it is. And to have a three-time world domino champion say, I believe in this enough that I want to be on the team and I want to help lead it, you know, wow. the, the wow. launch. Wow, that's, that's huge. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, to get that stamp is huge. Now, I know well, I have an iPhone, so I know you have the iOS version from App Store, and then they can also get the game to their phone from Google Play. Google, yeah, Play Google Store. Play. So, so Let's tomorrow, play. tomorrow it'll be on Google Play Store. Uh, unfortunately, we we the the iOS version won't come out until we go full production. Okay, so that may be maybe in 10 days, 15 days or so, but the Google Play Store, you'll be able to Big Stakes 5, download it and, and, and have, have all the fun, you, you know, your heart desires for sure. Wow, wow, huge. Now, this is going to have an international presence also, correct? Can, can you go, yes. go into that? Yeah, you know, we, we're fortunate to... You know, Neil, Neil is actually based in South Africa and he has uh, a great relationship with the CEO of the largest black owned marketing firm on the continent. And, and, and in addition, you know, not just the, 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 the largest black owned and then the, I think the third largest marketing firm period. And they've got clients like Mont Blanc, Texaco, uh, KFC, you know, you name it, the big, the big boys, uh, you know, they even represent the ANC, for example, mm -hmm. and then the president of, of South Africa, for example. Uh, so for them to, to, you know, receive us and say, hey, we want to uh, market, you know, be, become the, the agency of record uh, in terms of marketing Big Stake 5, it, it was an honor for us. We, you know, we say we selected them, but they also, you know, uh, selected selected us right. because they could have easily said, mm, "You guys are you know when you get a little bigger, you know, <laughs> right. talk to us." Right. But um, in that, because of the relationships that they have, not only on the continent uh, of Africa, but uh, you know worldwide, they have the ability to reach out and and touch a global audience. And then our development team, the actual programming development team, is based in India. And so they're helping to, to introduce the game in India, uh, for example. And, you know, you're talking 1.4 billion people. Yeah. And, you know, I, I don't necessarily believe SD and percentages, you know, the typical, oh, if we just get one tenth of 1% of right. all, no, you know, right. I, don't, I don't, you know, I don't live by that. But in the sense of uh, having the ability to enter, that market uh, with a game that people can can enjoy and understand, and if if the development team if develop if the development team's reception of the game is anything like what it can be throughout all of India, it's going to be a huge hit there as well. Wow. Because you know the 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 game it's intuitive, it's strategic, but it's also fun. Yes, you know? very fun. I can yeah. attest to that. And, yeah. And I, I had a conversation 
uh, with my wife, we we celebrated our thirtieth wedding anniversary. Two congratulations! Nights ago. I saw that. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And it, we were. She said, uh, how, "How do you feel?" She asked me, "How, how do you feel uh, about about the game?" And I said, she, and, "And she she went on to say, you, you seem a little nervous." I said, "I don't know that nervous is is the word. Uh, maybe more anxious than 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 anything." But she quickly <laughs> put me in my place in terms of letting me know, well, no, 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 no. You've already achieved. Let, let's understand that. You have created a platform for people to, to enjoy themselves and have fun. And so that, like an artist, like you, uh, as an author, your job is simply to create the, the medium and then how it's received, that's on an individual basis. You can't control it. So why even, even you know, worry about that? All right. But I said, uh, okay, I get that. I respect that and appreciate that. I said, but a answer this question for me. Why do you, talking to my wife, play the game the way that you do? Because she lo absolutely loves the game. We're sitting there looking at TV. You know, she's not paying attention because she's playing Big States 5. Yeah. And I said, why do you, is that because your husband helped create this game? You've been financially <laughs> invested. <laughs> why, why, do, why, do you play, why do you play this game the way right. you do? She said, she explained to me, you made it where people can be successful. Right. And she explained to me that when people play other games on the market that are huge, the reason they're huge is because people are able to succeed. And right. when they succeed, they have fun. Right. Said, oh. And so to, to a lot of, uh, to the extent that Big Stakes 5 is, is much the same way, you can succeed and, and have fun, you know, playing Big Stakes 5. And, and we purposefully made it where you can play by yourself against the box to your heart's content. One against three, you can play two against two, you know, two live players against two bots, or you can play four live players. And, you know, we've got a roadmap for going forward to even have one-on-one -on -one without the bots and all these different kind of iterations that we have coming forward. But, but it, it, I, I took comfort in that she said, no, I, I have fun. And that, that, I think, will resonate to your question yes. worldwide. P people will, will, in fact, have fun playing Big Stakes 5. Yes, yes. And, and, and I agree. And the way you were feeling is natural. I felt that way when I wrote the book. I would ask my wife, okay, why, why do you like it? And then, yeah. you know, because I felt like she was too close to it, right? right. So, so she was biased, I felt. So I wanted some outside opinions. And, and then, you know, I started getting that good feedback. And some people say, I like the book. It's not really what the genre I usually read, but it's nicely written. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm good with that. You know, it's not for everybody. But is the quality there? Is the professionalism there? You know, that's, that's what I focus on. And if you like it or not, or you agree with it or not, that's none of my business. But yeah, I want, yeah, yeah. I want you to uh, respect the professionalism and the yes. effort I put into it, right? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. so you mentioned something inadvertently uh, and, and I think people really need to understand this and they may be confused about it. A few times you mentioned relationships, mm. how you met Neil, how, how you met uh, your, your, you know, your, the, the social media uh, mm -hmm. director, just different people yeah. you met. Even the relationship with your wife, for her to retort or respond back to you in a re reaffirming, positive way, how important is it as an entrepreneur to get those good, positive, fruitful relationships? And how do you form them? Yeah, uh, that, that's, a, that's a phenomenal question, first of all. Uh, and one that I think is inherent to who you are as a person. Because if you, I, I think, you know, I'm, I'm not 
an expert in the field necessarily, but I think if, if you're not a genuine soul, then you, I don't know if rebuff is, is the word or, or, or you, you shun or you, you, you create yeah. a, a field around yourself yeah. that doesn't allow others to, to enter. Yeah. And so uh, I, I feel like I, I, I've been fortunate through years, quite frankly, of having relationships as the, with individuals that whether I have talked to them in years or not, that when they hear my voice or, or hear my name, see my name, that they respond, you know, and, and in, a, in, a, in a positive way. Yeah. And I'll give you, give you an example. Uh, one of my dearest friends, um, he was a second lieutenant with me in, in the Air Force. And we were over stationed in Korea together. And, and his name is uh, Roger Charlie Brown. Mm. Now, <laughs> Charlie, as we, as we call him, Charlie went to NC State undergrad, but then he went to a and North Carolina a and as a, as a grad because he wanted to become a pilot. He, he got his undergrad in engineering, but he wanted to be a pilot. And so he went to North Carolina a and North Carolina a and and we met in training, and then we ended up one month apart in, in uh, Korea together. Now, Charlie is what would be considered a good old boy. Okay. And, and man, when you talk about salt of the earth kind of guys, and I, 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 I laugh at him because he, he's the only person that I have ever met that still to this day uses the word supper. And he would he would call me Mikey, you know. And he'd say, "What's going on there, Mikey? And what's you know?" Because we we lived in the same captain's in, in, the, in the lieutenant's dorm right. in in Korea. And he's like, "What well, you know?" And he was I think he was on the third or fourth floor. I was down on the first floor. He's like, "You know what 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 are we having for supper?" Right. <laughs> so, but uh, man, I hadn't talked to Charlie in probably twenty two years. And I'd been looking for his number. And another guy that we were stationed with over there, uh, Freddie Krueger, shout out to Freddie, uh, Mike Freddie Krueger. He had Charlie's number, gave it to me. I reached out to Charlie. Man, we talked about two hours. Like it, like it had, you know, we'd never, never stopped, you know, wow. talking. But I say all of that to say, I think it goes back to who you are, you know, as a person. And that, that, and you know you, you you've probably seen it where it's not what you do for people or what you say to people, but how you made them feel, you know. And and I think maybe to to some extent, I guess perhaps they people have had great great feelings, you know, when interacting with me. Right. So that is what has allowed me to to be able to call on 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 different people and. You know, and I've, I've, I've been fortunate, uh, SD, through, through my life. I've met celebrities. You know, I was meeting celebrities. I mean, in Utah, celebrities like Howard Cosell and Jim Lampley and Sugar Ray Leonard and, you know, all the you mm. know, huge people of, you know, uh, Harry Belafonte, you know, and they, they come over to the house. You know, they weren't coming to see me, obviously. Right. You know, <laughs> I, I tease people, I, I knew Doug Williams. I met Doug when I was six years old yeah. and he was a third string quarterback at Grambling as a freshman. And, you know, I'm at practice and he's throwing me the ball because he's not on the field. So he just, you know, tossing. Right. And, but point being, I've, I've been around, you know, different people, but, but what I learned again, all of these lessons go back to, to my grandfather, but, you know, he, he taught me, you have to be able to, to dine with kings, yet walk among you know the common man, and so there is no single person that I put in any pecking order uh, with respect to status or, or otherwise. And right. so I think that that genuineness then inures a relationship with people that they respond, you know, when I need them. And so right. I, you know I can call them 
for example, Kevin Frazier at Entertainment Tonight or Michael Blackson, you know, African mm -hmm. King of Comedy. And, you know, my wife, she's like, you know, they, you know, we, we just sit there looking at TV. There's daddy's friend, you know, like, <laughs> you know, but but it's not something, you know, you harp on, you raise your right. hand, like, oh, you know, I'm this, that. No, 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 you know. Right, right. So, yeah. uh, but that, you know, I think that's that's what makes that possible. And that goes, who, back, who that goes back to the ego. Yeah. It goes yeah, back to the ego. That goes yeah, back to the yeah. ego. Yeah, it just got to be, got to know who you are, uh, be secure, be self-aware. And uh, these things are just falling to your lap. Uh, but but you got to be working in the process, too. You can, can't be in a cave yeah. hiding, you know, nobody right, knows you exist, right. right? So, exactly. yeah, yeah, kind of expounding on that, that is the way you and I met. Yes. And so, yes. and I, I would have never thought that we would be where we, where we are going or where we are at today from where we started. Right. So, right. so just to uh, update the people real quick, I, I'll, I'll give a quick story. So I'm writing a book, a toast to the man every week, every Wednesday, I'm posting excerpts of the book. There you go. <laughs> ah, my man, my man. <laughs> I'm posting excerpts of the book. Uh, on Facebook, uh, Mike is a childhood classmate of my wife, so they're Facebook friends. He sees the excerpts. He says, "Hey, it's my classmate's husband." Now, me and Mike don't know each other. He's just supporting, just because that's his classmate's husband, a Gremlin State alumni. Hey, there you go. So he right, gets the right. book. He purchases the book. Um. He says he enjoys the book. Man, got got a lot from it. Uh, one particular section, a chapter of the book, really really hit home for him. And um, fast forward, he comes to my book release party. Um, he has a good time. We start building from that, kind of staying in touch, communicating. Um, fast forward, he. Uh, I won't go into detail with it, but he uh, encounters a business opportunity uh, related to film, and 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 he gets he gets that opportunity through a relationship he has, right? Mm -hmm. Relationship again. Yep. yep. So really he good. contacts me and says, "Hey, would you be interested in writing a script for this docu series?" Now, keep in mind, man, I had never written a docu series. But it always it had always been something on my 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 wish list to do, to write not necessarily a docu series but a movie script. So you got relationships. I meet my wife. She knows Watkins, Mike Watkins. Man, Watkins hit it off, right? Watkins has a relationship with his business partner. Watkins comes back to me asks if I want to be a writer, right? There's all relationships and how you make people feel. And if you're obedient and open to being obedient, right? Fast right, forward, right. a relationship I had since junior high, former yeah, NBA right. player. <laughs> I won't I won't say his name because I don't know if he wants all that out there right now, what we got yeah, going on. Yeah. So he reaches back to me, comes back, moves back to town, reaches back to me because how our relationship was in junior high and high school, even as a grown man, he remembers that, comes back, reaches out to me about one thing, <laughs> about this one thing he has going on. So I say, hey man, I need to put you in the room with Mike, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so they talk about that. We go golfing, they talk about that. Exchange <laughs> numbers. I talk to my friend later, he said, like, yeah, yeah, Mike's going to be a part of that. But he's also going to be a part of this other thing I got going on, too. I said, like, wow, OK. <laughs> I said, like, OK. So, man, these are our relationships, people, and how you make people feel. So fast forward a bit. We have our group meeting, which includes Mike, my friend, and a few others about the business venture we're all going to be a part of. Mike says, hey, man. Now we're going back to the guy who we're connected to on the film industry. Yeah, Mike yeah. says, hey, Rod would be a good piece to this. Let's bring Rod in. They don't know Rod. I say, I'm good with it. I want to win. 
So they speak to Rod. Everybody respects him. Like, wow, okay. Yeah, we he, he has to be a part of this. Yeah, yeah. He comes, he's a, he's a part of this new business venture. People, relationships, 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 but doing the work. If I don't write the book, I don't meet Mike, right? If right. if Rod doesn't do what he's doing on the uh, film side and he doesn't uh, respect Mike enough to what he brings to the table because they're, they're watching each other work or not work, right? Right, right? Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. Right, so all this is coming together because we're working for one. People have to respect and know what you do, all right? Then ego, <clears throat> remove ego, be willing to work with others, know yourself, all right? And then being obedient and, and uh, Hey man, we and this is all happened within a year. Do you realize yes. that? <laughs> yes, absolutely. I do. I do. <laughs> I mean, so that's why I say I 20, 2020 has been good for me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the and, groundwork and, was laid a year, a year or two before, like this groundwork has been laid, you know. So right, right, right. And and, and that that takes what 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 you just described, it takes special personalities to one, be obedient to the source uh, and the universe, but also, you know, again, ego, because ego could be like, well, he doing enough, so why I need to invite him? I'm gonna let him, I know he working on this, so I'm gonna let him keep doing what he doing. And then you don't, you know, uh, allow that, that intermingling and whatnot. Whereas when you remove the veil and you go in truth and in love, then it's no, 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 no. I have to do what's best for the the entire collective. Yes. You know, even to the extent what you didn't say, you know, because I and I respect that because you're so humble. But you were like, I don't have to be a part of you know one of those ventures. Right. But no, we're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, yeah. you you made that happen, so of course you're gonna you know you're gonna be a part of it. But but ego, you could have been, you know, your, your mindset could have been completely different. Like, well, no, 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 I didn't mean for y'all to be connected on two things. I just meant that one, I just meant that one thing. You no, know? man, but, I was I was I was ecstatic and I was like, wow, I felt um I felt humble, grateful that you know I was a vessel to make on the vessels to make that happen, you know. And mm -hmm. then I, I did, I did, you know, put out there that I could pull out of one of these ventures. Because uh, quite honestly, people, I don't bring a lot to that table concerning that venture. Mike brings a lot. Uh, my my friend brings a lot, and I'm I'm only not saying his name because, you know, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right, Absolutely. right. Uh, Rod brings a lot, uh, and other people bring a lot. Man, I'm I'm low on the totem pole, but I know that. Yeah. <laughs> and, exactly. and I and, and that's in that venture. Not meaning as a whole, as a person, but I have to be self-aware of where I fit in and what I bring in that venture. And right, so, right. and so most of most of the time on the Zoom meetings, man, I may throw out a question or two, but hey man, I'm a student in that in that realm, I'm a student and I'm listening. And if I do ask a question, it's gonna be a quality question, not just out of face out of ego to be. A part of it, you know, just to right, say right. I said something. And, well, right. And, and, right, but but to that to that end, but oftentimes people will in fact limit themselves uh, to to the extent that, or or others within an opportunity will try to limit a person's contribution because of the word just. Right, right. There right. is no such thing as just. Well, right. all he did was just make an introduction or all he did was just make a phone call. No, 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 no. You can never put uh, a, a limitation on just because right. without just making that invitation or just making that phone call or just setting up that golf outing, none of it happens. Right. Or as you say, you know, all he did was write a book. Okay, well, guess what? <laughs> That set the stage, you know, for for everything else. And so, uh, one of one of the guys I, I mentor, um, he you know used to work with us at, at the foundation. 
many, many moons ago. And now this brother is just killing it in the uh, music publishing business. And I, I watched him do a, 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 an IG live interview. He, he was invited to be a panel speaker. And then when he came off the panel, he did a, an interview. And the young lady asked him a question. And he said, well, all I do is just set up. And at that point, I blanked out. <laughs> as soon as he finished the interview, I called him. And I said, don't ever in your life use that word again. He's like, what, what, what? I said, who else can do what you do? Mm -hmm. Nobody. I was like, well, then don't ever, ever, and I was serious, don't ever say to anyone else that all I do is just, mm -mm. if no one else can do what you do, there is no such thing as just. And so he understood, he, he received it. And, you know, I've seen a few interviews and he does not use the word just anymore, no. you know, but, but, you know, point is people often limit themselves by, by putting themselves in a box. Right. You know, I just write books or I just whatever. Mm -mm, no such thing. Yeah. I got to, I got to, I got to remove that subconsciously. I got to move that out of my subconscious. Yeah. Because you're right. It all plays a part, an important piece of how everything came together. So you're, mm -hmm. you're exactly right. Now, once again, people, we got CEO Michael Watkins with us, CEO of 1619 Gaming Group. Tomorrow is the rollout of Big Stakes 5. Go get it, download it on your platforms. Has the console, console version, uh, has the, uh, the the phone version, uh, the smartphone version. Go get it. Yep, smart, I've been playing. Smartphone, smart, smartphone and mobile app on, the, yes. on Google. And then uh, we'll, we'll have instructions on, on our IG, uh, at official Big Stakes 5, and face, same with Facebook for the uh, iOS users. So yes. this is dominoes on steroids <laughs> with, uh, yeah. with the, with the <laughs> poker gambling uh, component to it. Fun, lots of fun. I play it every other day. Um, I'm right, I'm doing a lot of writing now, so I don't, I kind of pull back even from the spades. And I got a deadline that I hadn't kept. And uh, he's also, <laughs> we're laughing because he's also my editor and I was supposed to have him a draft two weeks ago, actually. Uh, I'll have it this Tuesday for my next book, uh, Palmer Christie. So what we, we, we touched on, on your biggest roadblocks just in the industry itself, the gaming industry itself. But we get in this project, man, uh, to bring that to fruition and actually getting it to the point of launching tomorrow, what are some of the roadblocks you faced, whether personal uh, or or just, you know, what's to come in, within the industry? I think, you know, one of the roadblocks is I'm a Capricorn uh, and Capricorns by nature, if you, you know, you, uh, ascribe to astrology and all, all that the quote-unquote Capricorn is supposed to be but you know by definition yeah I, I, I fit that mode I'm, you fit you know, I'm, I'm driven I'm a self-starter I'm a go-getter uh, but I'm also a perfectionist and so I liken what this process has been book to uh, the artists that can't step away from the microphone mm and release the album oh if we can just change this sound if we can just put this right here and i'm gonna go back in and figure this out and all these different things that you know uh but 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 see the the th that's a two-edged sword because as you talked about early in the conversation about so few of us we also have to come correct so there's a fine line between making it the very best it can be, the very best that I know it can be, my team, you know, that we know it can be, but also, you know, saying, okay, hey, go ahead and release it. And you're like, well, it's, it's, it's okay. It could use this. And maybe if they did this, whatever, whatever. So then, you know, that, that's where in terms of the, one of the hurdles because our, our original goal quite frankly was all the way back in labor day 
And we kept tweaking. We kept saying, well, what if we add this? Well, we need to add this. Or how about this feature? And every time you do that, then of course that's more coding and more programming that has, has to go into it. So that's been a, a you know, a, a, a large quote unquote. And, and I don't know that obstacle is, is necessarily fair, uh, but, but it's, it's been something that has prolonged the, the, the release. But uh, second to that, you know, I would say probably Google and, and Apple because they're, they're very strict in terms of, you know, adherence and, and with respect to how they, you know, what they allow and what they don't allow. And as, as you may mention, for example, it's, it's a game that inures to, uh, you know, the ability to use real money or, or tournament play, for example, and, or, or, or play $4, let's, let's call it, and Google and Apple don't allow that. So we've had to make adjustments within that construct for what we can do on Google and Apple versus what will be on the web version that will probably come January 31st. But, you know, so, so small things like that, but, but most, mostly, and again, it goes back to what we talked about in the beginning, getting out of your own way. Because yes. Yes. if you are such the perfectionist, you, you can't ever get it out because it, it'll never be right. You know, I used to hear stories about Michael Jackson, you know, he'd have an album ready and everybody's like, man, it's ready to go. But he just would not let it go because it was something in him, you know. And of course, when he did let it go, though, you get masterpieces like right. literal masterpieces like Billie Jean and, yes. uh, you know. Off, off the Wall uh, is my thriller, favorite. Off the Wall, Thriller, you, yeah. know, you name it, you know. Yeah. And that, that Break of Dawn still, <laughs> yeah. Ooh, yeah. I love that one. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. You're, you're, you're right. It's, it is a double-edged sword. Um, but I would uh, rather lean towards being a perfectionist than someone <laughs> that doesn't care about what yes. they put out, right? Yes. So exactly. So yeah, I can pull back the profession, the perfectionist. I, you know, I'll, I'll, but I'll, I can't motive. It's hard to motivate someone that de just doesn't want to put out great product. So like, yeah, right. right. Exactly. So you you, you and, mentioned and that, Vegas. That, that, go ahead, go ahead, bro. Well, well, I was gonna say, you know, yeah, I was gonna say that that goes again, lessons in life that that I got, you know, from from my grandfather. When if you watch video archives, for, for example, of their practices, you know, and and his one thing was run it again, no matter how good the play was, run it again, run it again. Oh yeah, yeah, that was great, that was great, run it again, and because it was, you know, that perfectionist, you know, in him. But then ultimately also, very importantly, uh, SD, is he taught me at a very young age that if you're gonna, whatever you're gonna do, because you know I, I didn't play college football. I played up until my sophomore year in, in uh, high school football. But you know, he, he would say, whatever you're gonna do, be the best. And so the fact that I was a tennis player, he didn't care that I was a tennis player and he's you know greatest coach of ever, but, you know, and there, there's an quote unquote expectation like, oh, you know, what do you mean? Your grandfather's the football head football coach and you play tennis? Like, right. <laughs> but he didn't care. He's like, be the best, no matter right. what you do, be the best. And so, so that also is the mindset that we've taken into this project, which is be the best. So when the graphics that you allude to, uh, our graphics are far and above any other graphics that you'll find in a domino-based game. I agree. But I wasn't trying to compete with any domino game. I'm trying to compete as best I can on a limited budget, but certainly as best I can with the Call of Duties and, and Madden's and Assassin's Creed and all these big, big wars, you know, because and Fortnite's, you know, whatnot, because that's the standard. And so you, for me, Wherever the standard is, that's where you need to, to try to get to. No, lowest common denominator does nothing for me at all. Right. Never has no interest at all. Right. I'm trying to meet the standard 
and then go beyond it. And so we feel like for Big Stakes Five, you know, we, we've really done a, a phenomenal job. For example, we're the only domino based game that has 3D graphics. Uh, you know, we've got music embedded in, into the game. We're ultimately going to bring live DJ uh, mixes, party mixes on the weekends, and, you know, the ability to select your own radio and select what country you want to play in and different levels. And, and I mean, so, but again, it's, you know, be the best. Don't, don't go to the lowest common denominator. Man, powerful, powerful. Now, you mentioned Vegas. Now, is this going to be a game uh, that's going to be at Vegas at a table? Ultimately, yes. Okay. Uh, you know, we, we, we've had initial conversations with, with uh, uh, GMs of uh, Vegas entities, and it's been very well received. Uh, one of the things that they really like about Big Stakes 5 for example, as it compares to uh, Texas Hold'em Poker, is the quick turn of a game. Because, for example, uh, what, what you, the audience may not understand is for Vegas, it's all about turns. How quickly can I get your money and, and, and get you to put more money down? Right. So the average Big Stakes 5 game lasts about seven minutes on average. Okay. Texas Hold'em, 30 minutes to longer. Right before there's new money exchange, right? So the more times that I can have you transition your money, put more money in, what have you, the better. So it's been very well received. What we are ultimately going to have to do is create the proper mechanism uh, in certainly a post-COVID era uh, and also that people don't have the ability to mark the the stones and and so whatever that that mechanism is going to be i ultimately I, I envision that we'll have tablets at at a tape at tables where you know and then you have a, a host that is actually maneuvering the stones based on individual plays right. but you know we'll, we'll see how that works but to answer your question yes it, it def most definitely will be in uh in uh, casinos proper brick and mortar as well as casino houses uh, online Okay. Wow. So people, I do, I do have it on my phone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'm going to yeah, play as a guest. Yeah. This is the beta version. I've been fortunate enough um, to get the beta version and uh, you know, so I look, it's two options, play tutorial. I've never played a tutorial. And uh, well, yeah, I do. I do. That's a lot. And uh, well, you know that 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 tutorial that that is uh, you know, for the for the traditional domino players, they think they know what they're doing, so they right. automatically skip it. You know, right? But yeah, you do do yourself a favor and, and yeah. at least go through the tutorial once. <laughs> yeah, and I do. I thought about saying, yeah, I do go through the tutorial. Yes, I do. And so yeah, uh, yeah. yeah it gives you pointers, tells you about the game. Yeah, so. Man, this is a nice game. Graphics off the chain. And um, I don't know if you can talk about this, but I know at one point you mentioned a different element that was a unique element uh, somewhat of uh, the celebrity aspect mm -hmm. of, uh, was it e emojis or? Uh, yeah, 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 the, the, uh, the uh, emojis, uh, the avatars. Oh, the avatars. Is that yep. something that's still on the table or, or that you foresee it, happening? Okay. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's, it's still in the works. Uh, we're in, in talks with uh, a phenomenal company, uh, Genies, that has uh, revolutionized the, the avatar business. And so, you know, it's, as many people have seen the Apple emojis, Bitmojis and whatnot and create their own personalities. Well, Genies has done just an incredible job now of creating 3D uh, avatars that can be used as, you know, e as an emoji uh, to even even substitute, you know, for for yourself. So we we have a partnership with with genies, and so we'll roll out that celebrity component here. You know, we're working on our platform; they're finalizing their platform, and then when we pull the two together, this it's just going to be uh, phenomenal. But the idea is to be able to play against celebrities. In, in, in Big Stakes 5. So if you like 
playing, for example, uh, by yourself, but you want to play against, say, you know, Michael Blackson or, you know, Kevin Hart or, you know, uh, Zenef Star out of, out of New York, incredible music producer who, who does the music and, and, and did the music for, and he's our music director for, for Big Stakes yeah. Five. But, you know, you, you get a chance to say, hey, I played against, you yes. know, the, the celebrities. It, it, it's really the bots, but, you know, their likeness and their, their image. And so it, it's a change of pace, something right. that, to have fun, you know. Right. right. Man, that's, that's huge. Well, anything you want to share about Big Stakes Five that we didn't cover? I think we, <laughs> I think we, uh, <laughs> we covered it all. Okay. Um, you know, I, I, I appreciate one, this opportunity to uh, encourage people to just give it a shot. You know, I, I, you know, you mentioned that you play different games, you use them as, as meditation. Uh, I, I do the same, uh, honestly, and I, I have fun with it. And I think people that take the opportunity to, to play Big Stakes Five, I, I you know, I, I I thought about this and I'll, I'll be candid uh, to the extent that there's a push, let's say, to support black businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't want to take that road. I, I want people to play the game because they enjoy it. I like that. It just yeah. so happens that that I'm, you know, African-American, you know, descent. Right. But, I, you know, we, we uh, I should say, want people to play the game because they, they enjoy it, they have fun. Right. Um, you know, we've, we've done what we feel is, is to create an environment that is conducive, uh, you know, to, to fun. And, you know, the reality is there are going to be a lot of people that, that make a lot of money, <laughs> you know, uh, playing, playing Big Stakes Five. And that's great. You know, ultimately, uh, we want to create stars. Right. So uh, just like there are those, for example, Ninja, you know, he plays, uh, oh, I forget the game that he plays, but, you know, there are people that, that, that watch him play, you know, uh, it's not World of Warcraft, it's the other, the other game, but uh, League of Legends, something like that. But anyway, point being, you know, celebrities have been created from playing, you know, oh, these yeah. gaming, gaming uh, apps. And we'll create the same, you know, stars uh, for Big Stakes Five. And when we when we progress to the point when we get into the esports, and then you know you've got your draft, you got your stats, and you know, and people are showing up in Vegas and teams against teams and cities against cities, and it's just going to be phenomenal. Um, this is literally just the the launch point. But uh, again, the idea was we had to set the roadmap. And now it's all about execution. And we hope everybody has a lot of fun playing. Wow, I'm proud of you. Like I told you several times, I'm proud of you. I've never um, been connected to someone this closely that, uh, that has uh, come out with a project like this for, in gaming. Yeah, so this is, this is huge and it's motivating, inspiring. And I'm really proud of you, brother. Appreciate but, uh, it, man. Really I kind of want to touch that's, on this. Yeah, you, yeah, no doubt. Now, you guys had a tournament recently, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. How much was yeah, in that so pot? We did the, the initial tournament. It was, uh, it was a small tournament, uh, $1,000. Uh, and it was for, uh, let's see, what was it? Whoa, did it, or did we do 2,500? This is 1,500. Just a quick pop-up uh, yeah. contest just to, to uh, kind of see the, the players. And, yeah. and, you know, let them know that, and that's the other part that, that we've come to realize and, and, you know, again, lowest common denominator and whatnot, but you have a lot of these smaller yeah. events, tournaments where there's not a lot of money. Yeah. And so our, our idea, Hey, it's big stakes five. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah, we'll have some small pop-up, you know, $100, $200 noon tournaments. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you may have a $5,000 or $10,000 weekend tournament and, hey, you know, go, go for what you know and, and have fun. And, you know, so and, and then, of course, ultimately, this is going to drive back to, again, completing the circle where we started. 
that million dollar plus tournament in Las Vegas where you oh, play in person, but you're yes. playing big stakes five. Yes. I could I could see that going live. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah. Some yeah, some type of yeah. uh uh platform, maybe t TV, network TV or, or something. Yeah, maybe ESPN. Yeah. Yes. So I could yeah. definitely Absolutely. see that. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Um how are you gonna celebrate tomorrow, man? You got the big rollout tomorrow. Well, what's what's gonna happen? <laughs> hey, hey, you know uh, that's a that's a you said you were inspired by the section in the book, <laughs> a yes. toast to the man. This calls for a celebration. Yes, and how we all should celebrate. Yes, Sam champagne. Uh, yes. I I have my rosé moet uh, on tap, okay. and and it it will be popped. <laughs> To, tomorrow, I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I'm to to be honest with you, uh, Michael Blackson. Again, I'm not trying to drop names. Oh, no, no. Michael Blackson uh, was in town back in se October, September ish. You know, and uh, and he gave me one, uh, fifty has a new cognac, mm -hmm. and so he he gave me that that new cognac. So yeah. I picked I picked up some uh, some white labels. Monte Cristo okay. white labels yesterday, yeah. so I might hit that, you know, that Amen. new 50. Uh, <laughs> yeah, called Branson. With, with, Branson yeah, yeah. <laughs> with, with, with my white label, but but no, I, I to to I'm and I'm glad you brought that up because I I will most certainly take the time to to celebrate the achievement and the accomplishment, uh, and I, I my personality would not have allowed that until I read your book which you know emphasizes the necessity to celebrate small victories no matter how you know large or small right but a victory just the same is a victory and it should be uh it should be celebrated yes. with the respect that because you know it, even to the extent that hey if you don't celebrate you your victories, then why does the universe need to continue to give you any victories? Yes, <laughs> you yes, know? yes. So, yes. so it's not just a celebration. I want the people to know it's not just a celebration for you per se. It's celebrating everything that was involved, the, the people, uh, the universe, the, the gift given to you, you know, recognizing, right. hey, you were chosen to be a vessel, you were obedient, you followed through, man, you ran that race and finished. Yeah, so, yeah. hey, you got to recognize that. Then, wait, we're going to hit it. Go back to the drawing board. Exactly. <laughs> take, take on the next one. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, so, so go ahead. Yeah, no, so I was, I'm saying, so I'll, I'll definitely take the time to, to celebrate and and, uh, and give honor for sure. Good deal. Good deal. So we're going to close out soon, but we have our next, our last segment. And I call this first is first. First comes first. I'm sorry. First comes first. Okay. And I want you one word, name, or recite the first thing that comes to your head. I'm going to recite a title, and you recite the first thing that comes to your head. There's 10 titles I'm going to recite, and you respond with one word. It's, it's, hey, first thing that comes, no thinking. First okay. thing that comes, and then we'll close out. Okay. Okay. Techno Bowl. Football. <laughs> Super Mario <laughs> Brothers. Jumping. <laughs> Donkey Kong. Barrels. Fortnite. Money. Legend of Zelda. The Dragon. Tetris. Challenging. Grand Theft Auto. Addictive. Call of Duty. Hard. <laughs> Black man. Ooh, fun. Big Stakes Five. My baby. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, I'm sorry. I had two words on that one. <laughs> go ahead. Give me another one. <laughs> oh, no, my, no, no, no. Oh, I'm saying my, my, my baby. baby. Okay. My okay. Baby. okay. Yeah, that's, my, that's my baby. Hey, my so. brother, my, my friend, my brother, uh, business partner, man. Great guy. I appreciate you again for taking the time to speak with us, to give the people some knowledge and wisdom. And uh, I'm proud of you again. And hey, I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing what, what's in store for you. I, I thank you. Yeah, yeah, no, thank thank you, SD, uh, again, to, to, to be on your platform 
with all that you know you bring to the table you know you you are a hell of a writer and you. you know the 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 world is at your feet brother so wherever you you choose to take it you know it, it's there for you and so that i can be a part of that in any small way that you know in in history when they look at some of the interviews that you will have accomplished and, and done you know to that i can be included somehow in in that uh, you know the honor is mine and, and we the entire team of 1619 thank you for giving us this opportunity to share you know our, our baby with you oh yeah brother this is in this is documented documented it's in the history books hey it's gonna be here when we leave brother so this is history we're making right now so hey man Absolutely. thank you again and uh I'll be speaking to you soon, I think. I think we got a group meeting coming up. So, yeah, I'll yep. be speaking to you soon, brother. And enjoy tomorrow, man. I'm looking forward to it. Enjoy it. All right? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Happy, happy New Year, man. Happy New Year, brother. All right. Okay. Okay.